Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this week's All About Bikes with Bikewale where we answer all your questions related to motorcycles and scooter purchase. So we'll start with our Instagram account and the first question we have is from uh, Vipul Singh. Uh, Vipul says he, uh, he's been riding the Bajaj Avenger 150 and he wants to upgrade to a motorcycle with good power. Uh, he's 5'7 tall and he wants to know whether he should go with the Domina 250. Uh, he's mostly going to ride in the city and sometimes on the highway. Uh, he also wants to know whether there are any news on the Bajaj Avenger 400. So Vipul, uh, like you have uh, been using a Bajaj for a very long time and you have considered a Domina 250. Uh, I am assuming that uh, you are considering that because first it's a Bajaj product, product and you have been uh, you, uh, living with that brand for many years. Uh, so uh, it's a good idea to go actually with the same brand because you know how their service center works, you know the overall experience, after sales experience. And then now talking about the Domina 250, it's a it's a great purchase. It's it's a good uh, city motorcycle. It has good amount of uh, torque and power, and it's quite comfortable to ride in the city. And as you are pl as you plan to tour on the highways as well, so the Domina 250 can also do that pretty comfortably, right? Uh, your last part of the question about the Avenger 400, well, uh, we are not sure about if that's going to happen, uh, the Avenger 400. But what we know is Bajaj is working on a new range of cruisers with Triumph. So uh, these bikes are actually going to be uh, uh, either positioned uh, above uh, the Avenger brand with the different uh, new type of styling. But uh, expect that to come, the first bikes to come in early 2023, right? So, um, uh, if you want to wait for a bit longer, you can do that. But I think you should just go and buy the Domina 250 because it's a great product to have. Our next question is from uh, Fazil Jordan and uh, he wants to know when will TVS launch the Jupiter 125? Uh, or should he wait for it or go for the Activa? Because, uh, you know, he just loves the soft suspension experience of the Jupiter. So uh, Fazil, uh, unfortunately we don't have any news on the TVS Jupiter 125 but uh, we can tell you this that it will happen in the future for sure because Jupiter as a brand it's a very it's a very known and famous brand right it's a it's actually one of the mo most value for money scooters you can buy in the country and it's obvious that uh, uh, it, they will want people who are riding the 110 Jupiter want to upgrade to a bigger scooter so it is definitely going to happen and uh, and as you have mentioned that you really like the soft suspension setup of the Jupiter, uh, we actually advise you to also go and try out the Suzuki Access 125 because um, if you like Jupiter a lot, you are definitely going to like the Access 125. Plus the advantage for you, it's already a 125cc scooter, right? And it's priced well, it's, the engine performance is really good, the overall riding dynamics are excellent. So we advise you to actually go and test ride the Suzuki uh, Access 125 and uh, in case you don't like it, you can definitely go and buy the Activa 125. Our next question is from uh, Johan Fernandez and uh, he wants to know which is the best bike under uh, 2.1 lakh X showroom uh, that can comfortably cruise at between 100 and 120 km per hour. Uh, he doesn't want to consider Dominar because he's not really comfortable with their weight. So Jovan, uh, uh, like you mentioned, you want a motorcycle that is not as heavy as a Domina, right? And uh, I'm assuming that you are looking at a 200, 250cc motorcycle. So what we do, uh, advise you to do is just go and check out the Suzuki Jixxer uh, 250. It can either be the SF 250 or the Naked version. Both are excellent uh, motorcycle. Uh, if you want a bit of fairing, to, if you want a motorcycle that looks a bit sporty, then you should uh, go and uh, uh, ride the SF250. Uh, it's a great bike, uh, good refinement, good performance, good overall uh, uh, torque uh, capabilities and uh, it's a motorcycle that can do 110, 100, uh, 100 km, 110 km easily on the highway. So uh, I think that is what you're looking at. Our next question is from uh, Susendra and uh, he says he's confused between the Pulsar, uh, the Bajaj Pulsar NS200 and uh, the Apache RTR uh, 204 valve. Uh, he, he says that he's worried about the 6th gear. So, uh, Susindra, you know what, I think you should just go and buy the Apache 200 for me. One simple reason, uh, Pulsar S200 is an old bike, right? Uh, I know it got a BSX engine uh, update recently, but the overall design, the overall features is something uh, hasn't changed much. So, when it comes to the overall package, when it comes to the overall value for money, the Apache 200 uh, makes the most sense and uh, in the past, 
uh, we have got a lot of questions about these two bikes and we have always suggested the Apache 200 because it makes sense it's a more modern motorcycle and it is something that really you're going to really enjoy it over the next few years and our final question uh, on the Instagram account comes from uh, Maru Kotz and uh, he wants to know, uh, he wants to be, he's just trying to compare the performance between the Xtreme 200S and uh, the Xpulse 200. Uh, for him, the form factor doesn't really matter. So, um, honestly, it's exactly the same engine. The only difference you will see between these two bikes are the gear ratios. One is the ADV motorcycle, off road, slightly uh, off road oriented. The second is more street and track oriented, right? So, the gear ratios are a bit different, um, but when it comes to overall engine experience, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's same power, out, almost similar power output. and. Uh, so if you're looking for a motorcycle that uh, is versatile and uh, you really want to uh, go off, you know, off the road and enjoy the beautiful scenery, uh, scenes of uh, the country, then the Xpulse 200 makes sense. But if you are in the market for a motorcycle that has some fairing that, that also looks a little enticing uh, in person, then the Xtreme 200S uh, makes sense uh, for you. Our next set of questions comes from the Twitter account and the first question there we have is from Sharad. Um, he wants to know whether the Bajaj two, uh, Domina 250 is a beginner uh, motorcycle because he's, he's planning to upgrade to that motorcycle from a TVS Kuti. Uh, Sharad, so uh, I know the Domina 250 is slightly on the, uh, the overall power of is slightly more than the compared to the rest in the segment but uh, like you have already mentioned, you are coming from uh, upgrading from a Scooty. Uh, so we don't really see a problem of you upgrading from a scooter, uh, from a smaller uh, displacement scooter to a bigger displacement motorcycle. Right? What we want you to do is just get used to this entire uh, oral dynamics of the motorcycle. Make sure you have good, th learn your, uh, improve your throttle control, improve your overall, uh, you know, riding um, uh, skills with the motorcycle. And eventually, when you reach a point, then you'll be very comfortable with the motorcycle. But if you think, um, uh, for example, if you go and take a test ride of the Domina 250 and you think that he won't be able to handle it, uh, what we can suggest is just buy something like a second-end motorcycle, maybe a 150cc Unicorn, you know, and practice on it. And then eventually upgrade uh, to uh, Domina 250 because um, uh, we think that you really like the Domina 250. So I think we sh you should definitely go and get it. But just get used to uh, uh, a used motorcycle if you think you're not confident handling a 250cc bike. And once you're, once you're over that, uh, just go and get yourself a Domino 250. It's a great bike to have. Our next question is from uh, Giant Pixels. And uh, he wants our opinion on, you know, on the, his next bike. Uh, his requirements are maximum 200cc motorcycle, uh, which can do a daily commute of 70 kilometers uh, on the highways as well. And he's also looking for a uh, pillion comfort for occasional uh, long distance trips of around 200 kilometers. So, um, there are two motorcycles here. First is obviously the Xpulse 200 because uh, it's a great motorcycle, comfortable on the highways, uh, comfortable in the city. And the second bike we're going to recommend you is the Honda CB Hornet 2.0 because uh, we, had a, we recently had a good time with it and the overall experience turned out to be really good. Uh, so, what we want you to do is just test ride both the bikes uh, back to back and just find that genre of your motorcycle. You know, if you are looking at a motorcycle that looks cool, um, you know, handles quick in the city and the overall seating ergonomics is perfect, then the, maybe you might like the, the Hornet 2.0. But if you want a slightly more versatile motorcycle where it will also take you slightly off-road and maybe um, be extremely comfortable on broken roads, then the Xpulse 200 makes sense. So just, just test ride both the bikes back to back and I'm sure you will get an idea on what kind of motorcycle you want to buy. Our next question uh, comes from Sachin and he says that he's planning to buy a new motorcycle. He's around 5'10 and weighs around 68 kilos. Uh, he currently owns a 100cc motorcycle and he wants to upgrade. So he's confused between the Apache 200 4V uh, and the Honda CB350. Uh, his usage will be mostly in the city and uh, touring maybe once in a month, uh, once in six months, and uh, between 500 to 700 kilometers. And uh, he's also mentioned that Pillion is, uh, is a very top priority for him. So Sachin, uh, uh, I think you should just go and get yourself the Honda CB350 because great motorcycle, extremely easy to ride in the city, uh, accessible seat height, uh, the engine performance, the engine refinement is also good and plus it has, it churns out good fuel efficiency as well. And like you mentioned that uh, the pillion comfort is a top priority for you. That has been taken care of uh, in the CB350. And um, but one thing you have to just check whether you have the Honda Big Wing showroom in your city because 
the CB currently the CB thrifty is only sold through those premium showrooms. And uh, if you have it, if you have that showroom in your city, just go and get yourself uh, the CB thrifty. But make sure you take a test ride of that bike before before you you know just go and book the motorcycle. But if you don't have um, uh, the showroom in your city, then I think you should just wait for a couple of more months and. Uh, just wait for that showroom to come to your city because it, it makes more sense because after when you purchase a motorcycle and when it comes to after sale service, you just can't take it to a roadside mechanic. I mean, you can take it, but that is going to void your warranty, maybe the engine warranty or the battery or the electricals, right? And you don't want happening to a brand new motorcycle of yours. So just wait for a couple of months if you don't have the showroom in your city or else just go and visit one if you have it and I'm sure you're going to have a very good time. So now let's take some questions from our Facebook account and the first question we have there is from Rohit who's confused between the Husqvarna Java 42 CB350 and the upcoming Royal Enfield Hunter 350 which is also called you know these days the Interceptor 350. Uh, he says he's 24, uh, about uh, 5, uh, 7 feet tall and he need a motorcycle for 60 kilometers of daily commute and maybe a long ride once in every 3 months, say for example 200 kilometers. And he wants the ride to be comfortable and fun. Uh, Rohit, uh, the thing is you right now mentioned in this, uh, in your query that you are also considering the Interceptor 350 or the Hunter 350. And um, and we believe that that motorcycle will be launched in India in the next three to four months. So what we advise you to do is just wait for a few months because uh, we have seen the test the test shots of this upcoming motorcycle and we seem to like it and that uh, the engine is pretty good, the new engine from the J platform. So uh, just wait for three four months more and just experience the new Royal Enfield motorcycle and then take a call. Our next question is from Arka Das and um, he says that he recently rode the Royal Enfield Meteor 350 and he was very disappointed with the rear suspension. Um, in general the bike was smooth but any kind of jerk on the road was felt aggressively on the at the back and uh, he didn't really enjoy that experience. So Arka, you know, we have been riding the Meteor 350 for a very long time, almost we have done almost 7000 kilometers on it and we have a long term. And we have really enjoyed that motorcycle in various places and uh, and like you mentioned that it was a test bike and you're not really sure how the condition of the motorcycle was. But we tell you this that the low speed ride of the Meteor is excellent. It's one of the finest in the segment. Having said that the, the high speed ride is not something we really enjoyed. It still uh, felt a bit stiff on the other side but uh, uh, when it comes to the overall city riding experience low speed we really really enjoyed the Meteor 350. So, uh, we actually recommend you to just go to a different dealership uh, and just try a different unit of the Meteor 350 and maybe uh, you know that motorcycle, that test bike could be in a better condition than the current one. So Hani Lakwani wants to know whether we can expect Bluetooth enabled uh, Bajaj bike in the new, near future. Hani definitely that's going to happen in the next generation Pulsars, in the maybe the next generation Avengers or the new lineup of premium motorcycles coming from Bajaj uh, and uh, Triumph. Because what has happened is uh, over the last, at least last last two years, a lot of brands have uh, started uh, equipping their motorcycle with Bluetooth enabled uh, enable instrument cluster because you know it gives you more, it gives more value to their customers, and uh, so that's that's just bound to happen uh, when we see a new next generation of motorcycles from Bajaj. Our next question is from uh, Sheila Aditya Das, and um, he says that he's 5'10 tall and his budget is around two lakh rupees on road. Uh, and his upcoming bike will be used 70% city and 30% touring which is approximately 600 kilometers day. He is considering the Bajaj Pulsar NS200 and the TVS Apache RTR200 4V sorry and there is a third motorcycle which is a Yamaha MT15. Uh, he just wants to know what bike we'll suggest. So uh, I think we'll suggest you the Apache 200 RTR 4Wall because it's a great value for money motorcycle, it can do a lot of things together, it can do city commuting, it can uh, be ridden really hard on the racetrack and it, you can also tour on it. Uh, the MT15 is also a good option but uh, the overall seating ergonomics is slightly on the aggressive side uh, and it's a very, when it comes to the overall body, body proportion, it's slightly on the, it's not as bulky as the Apache 200, you know, uh, because um, uh, it's still a 150cc motorcycle. And it's slightly too aggressive when it comes to the riding. It's a great motorcycle in the city as well as uh, on the racetrack. But uh, Apache 200 just more, it's just better because it offers more features, it offers more performance, and uh, it has very good brand recall. So we'll definitely suggest you 
the Apache 200 RTR 4 valve. The next question we have is from Pawan and he says that he is 5'3 tall and is planning to buy the Meteor 350. Uh, he says he's not perfect at riding motorcycles with gear so he just wants to know whether he can, can he ride a geared bike right now or uh, should he just continue with the non-geared one. So Pawan, you know what we want you to do is just get yourself a second hand uh, motorcycle, geared motorcycle and just learn on it. Because uh, you can get yourself a brand new Meteor 350, yes, you can definitely do that, you can also learn on it. But there is a slight chance of you, you know, dropping the motorcycle or anything can happen while learning, right? And you don't really want that to happen on a brand new motorcycle of yours. So I think it's a, it's a very good investment to just get yourself a smaller, you know, like a 150cc or maybe even a 125cc geared motorcycle. And in fact, if you have friends who can lend you a motorcycle, it's the best idea, you save some money, right? But if you don't, if your friends are not ready to hand over their motorcycle, just get yourself a smaller, like a second-hand motorcycle and learn on it before you go and get yourself a brand new Meteor 350. Our next question is from Abhijit and he says that he has a budget of rupees 2 lakh. He's from Mumbai and his options are the Meteor 350 and the Domina 400. But his priority is, is one of the main requirements is that the motorcycle should have less maintenance or low maintenance. So Abhijit, uh, firstly, uh, like you have said, your budget is 2 lakh, right? Uh, we believe that the X showroom because the Dominar 400 costs about 2.4 lakh rupees on the road and the Meteor 350 starts, the onward price starts at 2.13 and it goes all the way to 2.25. So uh, obviously the Dominar is on slightly on the expensive side, but when it comes to the overall after sales experience, uh, when it comes to the overall low maintenance experience, the Dominar 400 uh, makes the most sense because it's a Bajaj product, right? And Bajaj always likes to pr price their spare parts, the overall after sales experience quite affordable as compared to the other brand. Uh, Royal Enfield is still a, it's, it's a lifestyle brand, right? So they still continue to charge slightly premium, be it a 350cc motorcycle or be it the 650cc motorcycle. So uh, um, to answer your query, I think uh, you should go with the Do Domina 400. Uh, uh, less maintenance, low maintenance, but also it's a more powerful motorcycle, right? and the overall highway capabilities of that motorcycle is really, really good. Our next question is from Tushar and uh, he wants to buy a new motorcycle but he's really confused between many because he says that he's six feet tall, uh, he lives in Pune and he's looking for a motorcycle that has low maintenance, it's stylish and also with good mileage uh, because, uh, you know, he's just not happy with the way the fuel prices are rising uh, these days uh, and his budget is 1.3 lakh rupees. So Tushar, you know, when I was looking for a motorcycle last year, this was exactly my requirements and I ended up purchasing the Hero X-Pulse 200. Uh, one main reason is because it was fitting my budget. I, so for you as well, because you're tall and you have a maximum budget of 1.3 lakh rupees, you should go and get yourself the X-Pulse 200 because the overall seating economics for a tall rider on that motorcycle is decent. Uh, it looks good, uh, it's more durable, it's more versatile and at the same time it offers a decent fuel efficiency between 30 and 35 km to a litre. I mean you can definitely get 40 out of it um, but it all depends on your riding style, it all depends how uh, well, uh, how good you are taking care of the motorcycle. So just go and get, your, get yourself the BS6 X-Pulse uh, 200. So Mukhtar has written to us and he says that he's a hardcore fan of the Interceptor 650. And he's heard that the Interceptor will also be launched in 350cc version. So he wants to know whether uh, that bike will come with spoke wheels or alloys. So Mukta, like you've already said, there is a smaller uh, motorcycle, a 350cc motorcycle. And uh, to be honest, we are not really sure about whether it will be called the Interceptor 350 or the rumors that are flowing around of it's being, calling, being called as a Hunter 350. I mean, we really would like it to be called Interceptor because it's a cool name and uh, if that, you know, Royal Enfield doesn't really have to spend a lot on marketing uh, the 350cc Interceptor because it's an established brand right now. So, uh, so from the spy shot, it's clear that uh, this motorcycle will come with the alloy wheels because uh, that is the best thing to do these days. Uh, you don't really have to worry about puncture when you're going long distance, right? And uh, so yeah, uh, Interceptor 30 will, the launch will happen anytime, like in the next three to four months and we are really, really looking forward to that motorcycle. Pawan uh, wants to know where there will be a Bajaj NS250 or RS250 in the next four to six months. Pawan, uh, so there is a definitely a Pulsar 250. Uh, we are not sure whether it will be called the NS250 or the RS250 or it could, you know, be called both by having two variants. Uh, we believe that it, this bike will be, you know, showcased at the end of this year 
and so expect something in the month of September, October, you know, during the festive season. So at least uh, we will have to wait for at least say 9 to 11 months for the official debut of this motorcycle. The next question comes from Yasar and he says he's confused between the Dominar 400 and the Himalayan, which is also a 100cc motorcycle. Uh, he's currently riding the classic 350 for the last five years and uh, he's six feet tall and he has a daily commute of around 30 kilometers. Um, his primary reason for buying this new motorcycle is a long tour on, on, on weekends of you know, approximately of 400 to 500 kilometers. Uh, he says that he's hesitant to buy the Himalayan because it has spoke wheels, poor headlight and the good thing about that bike is it's comfortable and uh, also the road presence. Uh, he's also concerned with the Dominar for its uh, headlights, tubeless tires, liquid cool engine, but uh, he thinks that the Dominar looks like just any other motorcycle. Uh, and he also says that the parts for that motorcycle is not readily available. Uh, he also wants to know whether the Himalayan will be launched with alloy wheels, say after six months. You know. So yes, sir. Uh, like you have mentioned that you're going to use this motorcycle primarily for long distance, right? Himalayan as well as the Dominar, both are great products for doing long distance uh, long distance touring. Uh, Himalayan, uh, the problem with Himalayan is uh, it has a limited uh, cruising speed, a comfortable cruising speed of 100-110 km per hour maximum. But if you want a motorcycle that will let you cover uh, distance between cities quite very quickly, then you can look at, you should definitely look at the Dominar 400 because it's a, it's a very, very good uh, touring motorcycle, it can do 130 almost comfortably uh, all throughout the day. But uh, like you mentioned, uh, you have certain issues with the Himalayan, you have certain issues with the Dominar. Uh, what you know, uh, actually will advise you to do is just go and buy some the Dominar 400 because in terms of features, in terms of overall performance, in terms of overall comfort, the Dominar makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Himalayan is also a great bike but uh, you're looking at a limited touring, uh, you know, limited um, comfortable cruising speed of 100, 110 km maximum. And uh, no, Himalayan won't come with the alloy wheels uh, anytime soon. It's because it's an ADB motorcycle and uh, they would, you know, most of these motorcycles come with spoke wheels. So we would, uh, uh, we don't think so, Royal Enfield will launch the alloy wheel uh, Himalayan anytime soon. So now let's take some questions from our YouTube account. And the first question there we have is from uh, uh, Achin Tamai and uh, he wants to his, he wants some suggestion between the Honda CB350 and the Interceptor and he says the budget is not a problem and he wants a motorcycle which is good overall he is 5 5 feet tall and have a strong build uh, he needs a good bike with good performance and reliability so Achin Tamai it's actually it's a very easy question for us because just go and buy the Interceptor 650 Great bike, uh, great performance. Uh, it's actually one of the few value for money multi-cylinder motorcycles that available that is available in India. Right? Just, just close your eyes, just go for it. Uh, you are definitely going to enjoy that motorcycle a lot. And the next question we have is from Varun Kumar. Uh, he wants to know: Is there any news on the new Java 42 uh, with the alloy wheels, uh, or is it be, is it going to be launched in the next two to three months, or will it take more time? Uh, so Varun, uh, we have spotted a couple of prototypes of this motorcycle, right? And it looks production ready. So we can expect that motorcycle to be launched in maybe next few weeks or maybe in a month or two. So it's not going to take more than two months for sure because that motorcycle is production ready. So it's definitely going to uh, sh uh, be seen in the showrooms in the next maybe a month or maximum two months. Our next question is from uh, Harshordan Tonage. Uh, he says that he's 5'3 tall, uh, he's looking for a bike to ride within the city on a daily basis and uh, as well as occasionally uh, uh, take it for a weekend ride. Uh, he tried the Meteor but he says that he had to stretch his legs a lot and he was not really happy with it. So right now he's considering the Java 42, the FZS25 and the Honda Highness. So Harshavadhan, we're going to recommend you to go with the Yamaha FZS25. Uh, the reason we are saying that is because we recently rode that motorcycle uh, and so we are still riding it. We have the bike for a couple of more days. Uh, we really enjoyed its overall city riding dynamics. It also, the highway experience, you know, it's comfortable. The sitting triangle is good. Uh, the engine, the, the talky nature of the engine, the low end, the mid range is really, really good. You know, you can reach 100 km per hour within a matter of few seconds and uh, 
uh, when it comes to the refinement, it's it's a Japanese motorcycle. It's Yamaha, so that is also taken care of really well. Uh, so uh, what we advise you to just go and test ride the Yamaha FZS 25 once before you book your motorcycle and. Uh, I'm sure after riding, test riding that motorcycle, you, you're, going to, you know, you, you're going to fall in love with it. So, FZS25 for you. And the next question we have is from uh, Aditya. Uh, he says that he has been riding an Activa for 4 years and now he wants to upgrade to a motorcycle. Uh, he's 5'10 tall, his budget is around 2.5 lakh rupees on the road. And um, he's going to use his bike in the city, which is approximately 40 kilometers daily and occasionally on the highway. Uh, he's keen on sports bikes, so he just wants some good options. So Aditya, as you mentioned, you're 5'10", so you're on the taller side and you want to commute a lot in the city, which you have mentioned are approximately 40 kilometers on a daily basis, right? And uh, you have a good budget of 2.5 lakhs. So we're going to advise you to just check out the Suzuki Jixxer SF250. Great bike, easy to ride in the city, good sitting triangle even for our taller riders for uh, like you and me and uh, it, it fits your budget and the overall experience with that motorcycle is also pretty good. So just, just go and uh, test ride this motorcycle once and uh, do let us know if you, if you have gone out and booked that motorcycle. The next question we have is from uh, Crazy Krish and uh, he needs some information about the Express uh, Elder Sibling, the either it's the 300 or the 400 and he wants to know whether it will be as good as the KTM ADV, uh, the Adventure 250. So uh, Krish, uh, it's Expulse 300, uh, it's not Expulse 400, Expulse 300. It's a brand new motorcycle platform, it will have an liquid cooled motor. Uh, power figures, we're still not sure, it'll be, if we do, if we tell you, it's just going to be a guesswork. Uh, but the official launch is at least two years away, uh, uh, because uh, they're still working on it and the motorcycle that was shown was an early prototype. Uh, so just, just we don't know whether it's going to be as good as the 250 ADV or maybe it could be better or it could be less interesting than the 250 ADV. But all we can say is we just have to wait for two years before we see anything concrete or if we hear anything concrete about that motorcycle. Next question we have is from uh, Ang Suman Roy and uh, he says that he has been using a Pulsar 150 for 11 years. Wow. And now he wants to update uh, or upgrade to a different motorcycle and he's confused between the Meteor 350 and the Apache RTR 200 uh, 4V. Uh, he plans to use this motorcycle or keep this motorcycle for a really long time and his mainly uh, requirements are city commute and occasional long tour. So uh, Mr. Roy, um, we actually, you know, it's both are great motorcycles, both we really enjoyed. Uh, we have been riding this uh, for really, really, I mean for many months. Uh, it's going to be a tough call for us, but we actually want you to ride, test ride both the bikes back to back. The Apache 200 uh, gives you a slightly more upright ergonomics, slightly, you know, uh, and a seating triangle that makes you feel that you are on the motorcycle, you are focused on the road. Whereas the Meteor 50 is slightly laid back experience, right? Something that you need more on the highway than in the city. Because in the city, you have to be attentive, you have to pay attention to your traffic all around, right? But when, uh, having said that, Meteor 50 is a, it's a good city bike, it's a great city bike, easy to ride in the city, great sitting comfort, great low speed ride. Uh, it's the same case with the Apache 200. Uh, in fact, Apache 200 also offers good amount of features for, for its price. So we actually recommend you to ride both this bike back to back and uh, just get an idea of what kind of genre of motorcycling you want to get in. Because Pulsar 150 is a street bike, you have enjoyed it uh, for 11 years, but maybe it's time for you to uh, you know, upgrade or maybe change your uh, genre of motorcycling, maybe to a cruiser or maybe to a slightly on the sportier side, which is the Apache 200. So just uh, ride both the bikes back to back and get an idea. And next question we have is from um, Kalei Selvi, and uh, he wants to know which he's confused between the Dominant 250 and the Classic 350. His needs are less maintenance, more fuel efficiency, more reliability, and uh, comfortable for uh, for pillion especially uh, one uh, lady sitting at, at the pillion. Uh, so Kalei, uh, <coughs> Classic 350, I know even with this B6 engine, uh, it's slightly better than the older one, but still an older motorcycle. The platform is quite old. Whereas the Domina 250, it's new generation, is liquid cooling. Uh, the tech has been borrowed from the KTM siblings, right? Uh, so right now, we will definitely suggest you the Domina 250 because it's a much better mo motorcycle. It's just overall, it's uh, when it comes to value form, it's much better than the Classic 350. But there is a new classic 350 coming in, maybe at the end of this year or maybe early next year. 
and this motorcycle uh, uh, is definitely going to be better than the older generation because it's it's based on the new J platform and we have already ridden the Meteor which is also based on the same platform and we quite liked it so but if you want if you can wait for almost a year then you can uh, wait for that and see the ch check out the three, classic 350 the new one but if you can't just go and get your, get yourself the Dermina 250 and not the current uh, classic 50 that's on sale so that's all for this week uh, thank you so much for writing in uh, and please keep uh, asking a lot of questions through our social accounts or also through uh, our uh, email box um, we would be really really happy to answer every query that comes our way related to your motorcycle and scooter purchase so thank you so much